make this rather snappy, won't you? I have some very heavy thinking to do before 10 o'clock. Well, welcome to our brand new podcast. I, it's kind of new. It's not totally new to us because we, yeah. we've all done this before with all of you. But uh, welcome. We're back and we are ready to launch a brand new, um, I don't know what you call it, a season of podcasting. I guess. It's, it's a new era. A I new mean, era, you think about new, it because because the, the broadcast radio era yeah. is over. Yeah. Yep. And uh, so many people yeah. have lis- listened to Mike. Yeah. On News Talk 1290 here in Wichita Falls for many years. Yeah. And Mike is no longer in the air. Terry and I joined him for many years. I, I actually had shows on News Talk 1290 for about 15 years. Yeah. And then we, the three of us have been together for quite a while. Yeah. Um, so, anyhow, that era is over. Mm-hmm. So, we're moving to streaming, going digital. But we've we done are. some of this before. Yep. We have. Yeah, so yeah, it's it's nothing new to uh, any of us. We're we're no strangers to any of this. Yeah. So, we got a few things we want to talk about on this show. Uh, a few things we want to address with you, and uh, we're going to kind of kick it off this morning. Well, what do we? Uh, Trey kind of did an outline for us of of what we're going to talk about today a little bit. Yeah, actually, look, real quickly, listen in ca- case we have new listeners, yeah. or watchers, or whatever it is, viewers. Let's let's introduce and, ourselves real quick, just real quickly, and kind of just talk about what we're playing on. What the well, plan we is could here. do that. Okay, we could do that. So, uh, see, I just kind of assume everybody knows who we are. Yeah, well, we're so yeah, famous. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. Hold no, back when we're out. Know, well, we've been around as long as we had. Not, not, not everybody's been at the post office to see your picture on the wall there. <laughs> That's true. All right. <laughs> well, I guess I'll start. Okay. So I'm, I'm Mike Hendren, a uh, 22 year broadcast veteran in radio and uh, now diving into the world of podcasting full time and um, have been uh, born and raised in Wichita Falls, Texas, Wichita County resident my whole life, um, licensed real estate agent and, um, uh, pretty much anything for a buck, kind of a kind so of a guy. Now a serial entrepreneur, yeah. it sounds like. <laughs> pretty, 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 pretty much. I mean, he's got yeah, you know, this, and he's got his hands on a lot of things. Yeah, I do. When you say it that <laughs> yeah. way, it almost, <laughs> almost sounds creepy when you yeah, think I was going to say, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, it depends on whose pants you're in. So. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, so anyway. Anyway, your turn. Who? You, Me? Terry. Oh, you. oh, okay. I'm Terry. You're the, you're the man in the middle. Yeah, I'm Terry McAdams. I'm with MacTech Solutions. It's my business I've had since uh, 1996, even while I was still in the Air Force, active duty here at Shepard Air Force yeah, Base. Yeah. Uh, arrived here in 95. Huh? Took the business uh, part-time anyway, in the huh? evenings and the weekends, uh, 1996. I... Um, I just found out that people wanted me to help them with their computers in the evenings and the weekends. And so I did that. And then I retired in 2004, took the business full time. And uh, just over the years, just been in two or three locations, well, three, four. Well, actually, it depends on which one, but three or four major locations. And we are here in Finishing Touch Plaza now. And uh, we are an Apple dealer, but we help out um, our customers. And but the thing with uh, how I met Mike was through the radio station, obviously, mm-hmm. uh, I hooked up with the sales, uh, I hooked up, <laughs> and what was that, Will? <laughs> uh, anyway, I uh, salesperson from the radio station, we got an idea, and uh, it was a tech tip thing, got on the radio, uh-huh. uh, when it was the uh, uh, the Rise and Shine show, uh, that he was the producer and, and co-host, co-host and, and yeah. all of that, yeah. and so then it, and then it evolved into hanging out with him once a week, you know? And so, uh, that's really kind of there. And I, I think I, I try to bring a tech perspective on a lot of topics and things here. And, um, I might have an opinion or two on other stuff. So yeah, one or two, (laughs) but uh, I don't know if that, that probably does a, hopefully does a pretty good little quick and dirty, but if you want to know more, you can go to our website, obviously, and read up on, you can find us out later. As yeah, we go along. Absolutely. So. Yeah, just Mr. Sorella. Be careful what you're going to come up if you Google search Terry McAdams. Oh, you yeah. never know. Uh, you just <laughs> never know. <what's laughs> yeah. My name is Trey Sorella. Uh, my business is Eddie Hills Fun Cycles. Been here um, in the power sports business in Wichita Falls since uh, 1966. I haven't been in the power sports business since 1966, since I was only born in 1971. <laughs> yeah. But I grew up here. I've been there since 1992. So this is going on my uh, 33rd year, I guess, wow. in one location. Um, former school board member, WFISD, for 12 years. Currently the president of the Texas Motorcycle Dealer Association. Yeah. Uh, very involved with uh, charities and that sort of thing. But the main business, my main business is power sports, motorcycles, ATVs, side-by-sides, and that sort of thing. 
and like I said before, have actually been on the radio on uh, a couple of stations here in Wichita Falls, always on a part-time, never on a, a real thing, just had shows here and there, but I've been on the radio with Mike for almost 15 years uh, straight in one form or other, not nearly as much as he has, not on, but just once a week or once every two weeks or a couple times a week or what whatnot. So. Well, and another thing that Trey has done too is it, you have uh, you've also done sports play by play. Yes, for I still our high school alma mater, the uh, Hershey Huskies. Yes, yeah, and uh, and and possibly even maybe doing some more of that down the down the line. You know. Yeah, yeah, I've I've enjoyed doing that. I, that's kind of one of my hobbies is doing high school football broadcast play by play or streaming. And there's going to be two high schools here in town next year going from three to two, and I, yeah. I don't know if I'll continue doing that, but I enjoy doing it and may, may end up doing that again as well. So we might be talking about a little bit of that and mm -hmm. some um, opportunities to get your name or your word out there during high school football. Yeah, uh, and, and I think he glossed over one part that uh, he was the – president of the school board for a period of his tenure on the yeah, school board yeah, a couple so, of years yeah. yeah so so that you know, yeah i don't want you to get away with that you know without <laughs> well, saying that, you. So. yeah yeah, but, uh, yeah. definitely definitely uh definitely got a lot of a little bit of political experience here with uh with trey so he brings a he brings that perspective yeah. to it for sure well uh, i i do want to mention um so our our local um state representative james frank uh, got some town halls coming up yes here mm -hmm. in the um, very near future. Trey's got some information on that. Uh, yeah. When, I, when are those coming up? Well, I don't have the rundown of it. it really, you could go on uh, James Frank. Uh, he, he has a newsletter, which, by the way, if you live in this area, it's a good idea to get signed up with James Frank's newsletter. It's pretty informative. Yep. It comes out, I think, once a week during legislative session and once every two or three weeks when it's not legislative session. Um, I'm not sure if you go to the website or you could contact the local office and they can let you know when the town halls are. I did attend the first one. It was in Clay County. Got a couple of tips. Number one, don't dominate the damn thing. We, we had two people there who probably took up, we were there probably an hour and a half. Yeah. And I would say that there were two individuals that took up probably an hour of that wow. or 45 minutes. It was ridiculous. You know, it, I understand every, you got everybody's passionate. And by the way, what you don't understand is I'm just as passionate about my stuff as you are about your stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I'm also considerate of other people and understand that just because my issue is big to me, it's not big to everybody else. Yeah. And you have people that just want to keep on and on. Mm -hmm. And especially when it gets very specific and they want to talk about their individual thing. James Frank is a state representative for – you know, I don't know how many people he, he represents. One hundred fifty thousand people, or something like that. Tens of thousands, anyway. Well, it's, yeah, it's right. a, I believe it's one hundred fifty. I, th I think that's what lot. he said. Yeah, it's yeah. A, I think it's. I think he talked about. I think what they do is every ten years they have a census, and they take one hundred fifty thousand people mm. and they break up their state representatives. Mm. I think those numbers are right. Whatever, it's something close to that. All right. So understand, his area encompasses one hundred fifty thousand people, spending a whole bunch of time on your specific thing in a town hall setting when there's other people there. Yeah. We're there to listen and speak and like like that is it's really inconsiderate. <clears throat> so that's just that's just a uh, a little tip from Trey. Right. When you're doing something well, like that, don't try to dominate the conversation. And you're going to have a more effect. You're going to be more effective if you narrow that down to your top issue. Yeah. And 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 it, right. and it, and, it, and it, you have to kind of see where there may be a benefit to other people, not just yourself. Well, so, uh, and also what happens is, look, <clears throat> it's like anything else. I might be on board with you for the first 10 minutes, yeah. but by the next 10 minutes, I'm kind of getting off board with you. I may agree yeah. in principle what you're doing, but I don't like you anymore. Yeah. Or, you know what I'm saying? Or, or I don't, I don't like your delivery anymore. And I'm looking at you as a narcissist. Suddenly you fall out of favor. Because right. You, right. Because you're trying to dominate the conversation. So anyhow, that's just a tip, but I, w I would recommend people go to these town halls. You need to get involved locally. I've been beating the drum about this. Yeah. We, we love to talk about, the White House, we love to talk about Congress. We love to talk about national issues. Sure. National issues. Now, the border has, is a really big difference right now. Wow. This is affecting it, everybody. Well, it covers yeah. two areas. It covers us directly because we're Texans. And yeah. secondly, it's a national issue. So, but, that's, And it's uh, sucking a lot of resources. That's oh, the biggest yeah. thing. Sure is. But for the most part, national issues don't matter as much <clears throat> as local issues do yep. to, for your day-to-day -day basis. Most of your taxing has come from local. Local. And your state representatives, your county officials, 
your city official, your school board officials. Don't forget on that. When you talk about taxes of your property taxes, the number one component of your property taxes is school district. That's right. So be involved in who's who's uh, setting your tax rate at the school board level. Yeah, yeah definitely, definitely. That's my two cents. It looks like his next town halls are coming up in uh, Motley and Cottle County on the 20th of February. Where are That's out west. Uh, okay. It's out west. <laughs> uh, Motley County Courthouse, 10 a.m. Um, in Cottle County, the uh, City County Library in Paducah on the 20th at noon that day. And then on Thursday, the 22nd, he'll be in Wichita and Archer counties, uh, 10 a.m. at the Grove in Burt Burnett, 1.30 p.m. at the Electra Memorial Hospital Education Center at 1.30 p.m. on the 22nd, and 4 p.m. at the Community Center in Holiday on the 22nd in Archer County. So, and for those of you that are watching or listening and don't live around here, Wichita and Archer County are like, and Clay. And neighbors. It's actually three. There's three counties that converge right here at Wichita Falls, right south of Wichita Falls. That's Clay County, correct. Archer County, and Wichita County. Correct. Terry and I both live in Clay County. Yeah. You have a Wichita Falls address, don't right. you? I do, too. Yeah. We both pay Henrietta. We live in Clay County. We pay Henrietta School District tax. No, uh, no I'm... Um Petrolia? Petrolia. Okay, yeah. you pay Petrolia. I pay Henrietta, right. which are both in Clay County, yeah. <laughs> but we both have Wichita Falls addresses. That's right. And it, it's kind of strange. And that's uh, the zip code, 76, I'm 76305. I'm 76310. Yeah. Right, but 305 is this huge that covers the north of the base as well as uh, west of town yeah. uh, as well. So yeah. I'm sorry, east of town. But By so, the way, Motley County, didn't it sound like a place that they just beat Motley. the hell out of each other? Motley, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but by the way, if you, if you don't know when most of these counties have names, Motley was one of the original founders of the state of Texas. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. If, if you hear some of these counties that you're like, well, where did they come up with that name? And it doesn't sound familiar. There's a great museum in Washington on the Brazos, if you ever get a chance, that talks about the the years that Texas was a country. Right. And it focuses right. just on those years right. from the uh, battle at San Jacinto. Yes. You know, where, where Texas – officially became its own entity country yep. uh, with Mexico's surrender to when Texas was annexed by the United States. Yep. And that whole, that, that um, museum focuses on those time. And Motley was one of the original yep. founding people that signed the Texas declaration of independence and all that sort of thing. Yep. Okay. So. Well, and uh, you, you mentioned the border tray and it's worth mentioning that we um, um, here in Texas, We've got the biggest portion of the international border mm. with Mexico. Stretches from basically Brownsville all the way out to El Paso. And we have the biggest challenges in terms of the physical control of that border because the federal government's not doing their job. They're not taking care of it. And we're having to do it ourselves. <clears throat> and we have this, you know, this ongoing battle now between our state and our governor and our legislature and the federal government and, and the current administration uh, that's doing absolutely zero. And we have this, this constant now expense, if you will, of protecting this border. It has already cost Texans billions of dollars to keep this border as secure as we can. Uh, to the to the greatest degree that we can, given the limitations as well. Right. Well, well, the physical limitations, logistical limitations, uh, and legal legal, legal limitations. legal limitations that have, that, that were apparently now basically just going screw the limit, screw legal, legal limitations, and we're but we, you know, we have limited resources. You know, we've only mm -hmm. got we've only got so many people we can put down there. We're actually, and this has been going on for a couple of years now. We are reallocating resources. We are moving people in the Texas DPS, uh, Texas game wardens, moving them out of their counties where they normally yeah, work and sending them to the border and refocusing their efforts on the border. Right, and that's that's affecting our local areas where they're coming from. That's right. Leaving a gap of, of coverage, if you will, from that's a right. law enforcement mm -hmm. perspective. And then, um, and then you're also affecting their families. I mean, exactly. you're, you're deploying. It's like a military deployment almost. Now, Pretty much. Yeah. I, I don't know what all the legal ramifications of someone trying to decline that if they didn't want to go, but I know, I'm know i quite sure most of them are all for helping out, but then for them to have to go down there for you know months and 
in a couple of years on end, you know, that, what that's kind of crazy. What I have been told, guys, by people that I, I've been communicating with that are you know, part of the DPS or other organizations that are working down there, very few people that have been asked to go there and work the border have said no. Right, Very right. few have declined. Well, they, they might not really have much of a choice. I mean, I, well, that's I, what I'm saying. I it's not know. the military. They're not right. going to throw you in prison, but you may lose your job. Yeah. Right, but right. may use your, right. lose your but, career. But very few people, I'm told, have said no. Right. Most people understand that, that how important this job is, the fact that we don't have the feds doing their job that they normally would be doing right. to protect this. It should be doing. And should and, be And doing. by the way, look, we need to, we need to <clears> make this very clear. I don't think there's anybody that's that is besmirching the name of the border patrol agents. Oh no! I don't no, think no. most of the border patrol agents. If you look at the border national border patrol no, agent association no. and all them, yeah. all their representatives, they're saying constantly, "This is not a border patrol agent issue. No. This is Mayorkas, Biden, the very very pinnacle yeah. of the border patrol. That's who's causing this problem." Well, speaking of, of Mayorkas, um, yeah, the U.S. House of Representatives were set to vote on, or they did vote on his impeachment, that vote was defeated by three Republicans who joined Democrats in voting against uh, or voted no on the Mayorkas impeachment. Those representatives were Tom McClinic from California, Ken Buck, Republican from Colorado, and Mike Gallagher, Republican from Wisconsin. And, and you, the one that bothers me is Ken Buck because he's got a cool name. I mean, does that sound like a guy that would vote against impeachment? That sounds like a guy like a guy that would come in and try to kick your ass. Well, all Ken, the, I'm Ken Buck. You know, <laughs> yeah, almost like a professional wrestler. Yeah, man. yeah. He's going to go to the border with a, a knife, uh, one of those big knife, Bowie knives in his teeth, and uh, stop the, my, the immigrants. Well, their argument against voting for the impeachment was is that they didn't feel that Mayorkas had at this point done anything that reached the level of impeachment. They, their, their fear here was is that we were setting the bar too low well, and not – yeah. So, so, so wait a minute. So Mayorkas, der, obviously dereliction of duty that we have data, hard raw data to point to because the, the amount of, uh, of gotaways and the amount of uh, right. illegal immigration that's happening right. during, during his – watch yeah. and with, with his policies that is too too low a bar but yet you're going to impeach a sit a former president for an insurrection that was never charged with insurrection right it was never proven never charged in a court of law right yeah, yeah. what a bar yeah right well and and here's another interesting take on this and something that that i had to kind of i probably didn't have to deal with it as much as maybe some of the higher ranking officers and things but if um in this case, if you're, I mean, he, they're the, who's their boss? Who's Mayorkas' boss? I'm assuming Biden. Yeah, Biden, Biden, right, because yeah, the department step, chairs yeah, yeah. Are, are the, or was it department chair? No, he, not he, chairman, but the head of the departments. Um, he's and, a secretary. Or secretary, yeah. there you go. Secretary work for the, the, the president. And so the president obviously is laying this agenda out and, and laying down what, the way they want things to go. Or somebody now, somebody in his somebody who's running the show right, up there. But right. here's the thing, though. They took a an oath of that office to – to abide by the constitution that yes. and and so that's where we as a military member we actually have an obligation we um to decline illegal orders well exactly for instance and and so it's not about that's the whole thing about this is that it's not it's like a pol police officer also has they are supposed to if they're able to take someone's rights away or they're able to do things like, you know, as far as a military member, in theory, you could go rape and pillage a, a village. But if there's no strategic value, no no true war uh, uh, benefit to, right. uh, to, to, to defeat the enemy, then that is against the law. I mean, you've broken the law. Well, if, and so that's why you've got to follow the law, even if you're given an illegal order. That's a hard thing to well, do. Well, you think, perfect example, when you said uh, police, that's a, that's a good right. one. For a police officer, you have commanders. If if you're a police officer and you arrest a suspect and you take him in and the chief of police says, put a bullet in his brain right, right now, that, and you that, do it, right? You have, you, you, you're you, both bad. You're, you're yeah. both in trouble. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're not just bad. You're both. Well, yeah. You're both in trouble. Right. You now you've committed murder. Right. And just similar, as, like you said in the military, mm. if uh, if a if a commander tells you to go bomb a village, mm -hmm. 
and it's and it's a village of a bunch of innocent people and and right. a and a, a, a bomber a bomber or a, the airplane the pilot says no I'm not doing that right you know they can bring him up on charges but he ultimately will win because he if he could prove and say wait a minute right. you, you told me to bomb a village of twenty you right. know uh, unarmed people or right. something like right. that so uh, yeah exactly you're perfectly right, right about that so it, it, you don't have to follow a direct order if it's contrary to the law right. Exactly. So you, that, you, somebody can't compel you. Right. Somebody cannot and, compel you to break the law. They can't do it in right. contract. They can't yep. compel you to break the law. Nope. And then and and he has an obligation to refuse that order. He then and and in the case he has to, he may get asked to resign, and that you just that's just the unfortunate gives the part. berries right. And there and that's a political aspect of of our mm-hmm. government, and that's just the way it is. And, well, the good news is you're allowed to resign instead of somebody. Like like uh, oh, like yeah. Russia or something like that, where you just disappear <laughs> That's if, right. you, if you disagree with Putin. Yeah, that in so, China. Yeah, and, you're yeah. absolutely right. It, yeah. it, this is a it's ridiculous mm-hmm. that they that these Republicans decided to not go through impeachment. Look, we all know that the Senate probably would not convict him. Oh yeah, yeah. It was a, and and it I'm was not big on wasting time and things like that, but there are some times you have to make a statement. Right. And this this is one of them. So. Yeah. Well, okay. and that and that it absolutely sent would send a message, impeaching him would absolutely send a message. Um, th- this whole situation with the border, it, it's the, the thing is a dumpster fire, and it has been now for three years. And you look at the numbers, you know, you had the president out there saying that uh, you know the the whole border issue is all Donald Trump's fault. Look at the numbers between twenty twenty. And 2023, and how those those numbers of people crossing the border illegally, the number of gotaways, the, the people, and and you look at matter of fact, I shared a video the other day that somebody had had posted. Um, there's there's standing there are Chinese nationals crossing the border, people from Russia. Yeah. Oh, Russia. by the way, those Chinese nationals they were they were carrying like good luggage. Yeah, yeah, and dressed well. All, all of these people are well dressed. They're clearly not starving. Yeah, They're well-fed. Well fed. They're clean. They don't look like they've been walking through the desert for four or five days, you know, trying that, to trying to reach the, that's the border. That's a perfect example. We, I was at the, the speaking, go, let's go back to local. There was a, a candidate for him. We have a, our Senate District 30. Yeah. Our, our current Senate, state Senator, Drew Springer, yeah. is going to retire after his term is up, yeah. which basically he's, he's still in office for the rest of this year. But, so there, there are several people that are running for his, his position. I think mm-hmm. there's seven. Wow. I believe that's right. There, yeah, at the candidate, there's four Republicans and three Democrats. Wow. At this candidate forum that was held at Midwestern State University here in town, yeah. two of the Democrats were there and all four of the Republicans. One of the Democrats, and this guy, actually, I, I told him afterwards, I said, I'd like to come to your church and, and just listen to you preach. He's a, he's a, a bar, been a barber for 51 years and a preacher for like 32 years. And he's a really great pastor. Wow. I don't agree with him at all on his assessment of things, yeah. but he but he speaks well. And, uh, I mean, he speaks with, with conviction the way he's, he's inspiring to listen to. Yeah. But he made a comment, and he was talking about the somebody brought up about the border. And he talked about this whole thing about this guy walked 3,200 miles, walked 3,200 miles, and all he wanted was a job. All he wanted was a job. I agree that that happens. Sure. But... That's not the majority. No. And and by the way, what about the people that already live here who are part of our American system who already paid taxes? What about them yeah. getting exactly. those jobs? Exactly. And I hear this crap about people doing these jobs that Americans won't do. Americans, who do you think built this country? It, 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 and it, Americans won't do it for free. No. And no. and by the way, this is why I've been saying for years, for years, the people we have to go after to stop this illegal immigration crap is the employers. Yeah. You go in, you have that e-verify system, but not only that, we catch you as an employer at hiring somebody illegally, you go to prison. Right. You lose your business, you lose everything. You go to prison. That's right. Okay. If you do that, that will stop this because though there people won't risk, some people will, but let them go to prison. Most people that have a business will not risk. Well, yeah, because Terry, would you would you risk your livelihood and your freedom to to try to save a few bucks. No, hey, no, no, you can't. No. You have to look at it risk reward. No. Okay, the reward to these people that are the illegal immigrants are there's they have no risk. They come in, 
uh, what's the worst that can happen? They get deported, deported back to where they were from. So there's almost zero risk. The reward is they may get to come to America, live in America, disappear into America, can get a job in America. Oh, yeah, it's all laid out well, by the, the the actions of our president have yeah. created this demand of people saying, oh, so it's a magnet. Go up there and, yeah, it's a magnet. And they're going up there. They're coming here. And this is crazy. What I want to know is why we don't have everybody in the media jumping up and down, screaming and shouting, demanding answers as to why we have people literally being flown from the other side of the planet to either they're either being flown into Central America and then transported into Mexico or they're being flown directly into Mexico. Obviously, the cartels have some sort of a, a role sure. in yeah. getting so, these people close enough to the border that they can then walk into the USA. Who's financing this? Somewhat, somebody, some entity, some country, someone somewhere is financing these flights. These people are not getting, they're not, you You're, know, you sure they're not on a raft from Africa or China? Pretty damn sure. A, a, a homemade raft? Pretty sure. So I, I, so I have a question. Although Gilligan's Island, you know, <laughs> they were stranded on that island for, what, 37 years and had the exact same clothes the whole time and looked great. I was wondering how the Hallroom Globetrotter showed up there and then got off the island and Gilligan and them yeah. couldn't get off the island. I'm just, I, I'm telling you. And, and by the way, let me just settle the debate right now. Ginger, Marianne. Marianne. It's Marianne yeah, all the way, baby. There you go. All the this way. is how. So, hey, <laughs> okay. You a so, sick puppy. Uh, so, real quick question. Okay, On yes. The, what are the numbers? Love her. What, 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 how many, what, what are the numbers of people that we've allowed under the Biden administration to come into the United States? Um, if you look it up, it what? says a shitload, I think, <laughs> <laughs> officially what the number is. Okay. Well, I, I need a, just, it's a lot. I mean, is it million, a million? We're, we're in the millions. Okay. We're, we're in so the let's millions. say it's a million. I don't, I, whatever it is. If 1%, mm -hmm. and I don't, I don't know if that's even a real number, but let's just throw out 1% of a million. What is 1% of a million? So a million, 100,000, 10,000, 10, how many people did it take? To do to uh, pull uh, pull off nine eleven, nine nineteen nineteen. Yeah. Okay, nineteen hijackers were involved, and probably right. at least another dozen people in so, the planning. Let's say a hundred people. But so, let's say a hundred people. people. Even a hundred people. If if yeah. of of a million people, so point oh one percent. So ten. Yeah. Right. That that you know of all those people that the numbers are. It overwhelmingly, and as far as odds of somebody getting through that are coming or being routed through, right, th th and coming up and walking, and right. that's their mission, and they're terrorists. That is crazy. Or, or even right. even if you're just going to say, let's let's take the terrorism out, but are just criminals. Oh, I yeah. Mean, oh, there's yeah. A, there's a no, percentage no. of people that Absolutely. are already criminals, no matter where you're right. from, including and, America. And, there's a percentage of people that are already criminals, especially if you go into people that are desperate, right. that are poor, so. and, and, and stuff like that. Those numbers go up exponentially. So right. just say we let in 10,000 more criminals. We already have plenty of criminals yeah, of our own. Our now we got here, more criminals? And, here, here, Here's a number. Here's an, uh, let, me, let me throw a number at you. This is based on the Judiciary Committee's report on the number of illegals that have entered the U.S., during the first 26 months of Biden's presidency, DHS released at least 2,148,738 illegal aliens into the United States. That's Again, crazy. this is according to a Judiciary Committee And report. that's released. I mean, those, this means people were caught and released. Yeah, this, this doesn't count. <clears throat> this is not taking into account the gotaways, the, the people that, that totally escaped, totally escaped, um, the, uh, the the DHS uh, uh, apprehension. The committee found that only 5,993 of those encountered at the southern border were placed in removal proceedings. And by the way, it's worth mentioning, when you talk about the removal proceedings, so um, among these 5,000, nearly 6,000 people, some of these people have been given a court date. Some of those court dates are 15 to 18 years Away, years, no. years, years away. Okay. Not I, months. I, I, I know we're we're gonna have to wind this down because we talked we talked about right. trying to get down to thirty minutes. Yeah. Now, on our next episode. Yes. I have a theory about homelessness and that sort of thing, and it ties into this. Right. 
And so on our next episode, I want to explore that. Um, you guys might say I'm full of shit, but, but let's be fair. And, and I, I think both of you have been around, but Mike and I have been around here a long time. How many times have I come up with a theory, Mike, and within five years, it, it's, it's I, I, I called it. It comes in the news. It finally gets it, 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 it finally He gets, has a better track record better track record than Puxatani Phil could ever hope for. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you that. And I want to I'm not nearly as cute then. Yeah, before yeah, before and uh, if he we, sees his shadow, y'all better get yeah. in, in the bomb shelter. I'm just well, telling you. Well, if uh if if I want to add to the a couple quick things on that thought. So, first of all, the 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 Democrats or the the liberals that are for making this easier yeah. to uh yeah. for people to get into the country like they have been. Um so they they have very little to lose yeah because our congress is what what the drunken sailor spending like a drunken sailor whatever yeah. the term crazy, is crazy and, money and crazy and money. we're we're taking money so we have our veterans and things we, i think we'd all like to think that our veterans are, and even if it's not just our veterans our own people regardless of their situation yeah. and you're talking about homelessness and yeah. all that and so if we're going to take all this money and we're going to throw it at uh we, we'd like to put it towards those kind of programs. And I think we'd sure. all agree that there's, there's a certain investment we need to do in that, Absolutely, yeah. but they don't. It, so what they're saying is, is, well, you're taking money away from veterans and this and that you could be spending. Blah, blah, blah. Well, no, what they're doing is just expanding the debt and, mm -hmm. and they're just pushing, kicking the can down the road. Right. But, but where and, they really are taking things, the resources, they're taking places. There's, right. there's like New York city, Chicago and things like that. There's kids that don't have, who don't have after school programs right. because of physical locations. That's not has to do, right. do with money. That's right. not printing money. Right. That's in the or, short term. Yeah, Absolutely. People can't play their kids. Can you imagine how pissed off you'd be if you were an American citizen and paid your taxes and your kid, you had an after school program someplace for your kid, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and, and by the way, most of these are poor kids. Right. You know, the 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 wealthy kids or the upper middle class kids that oh, live yeah. out in the suburbs and forget color. I'm tired of this shit. This shit. I'm gonna say it. We're, on, we're not on the radio. I'm tired of this shit about color. It has nothing to do with color. It's have and have nots. Yep. I, I recognize this for. I've been saying this for years and years about when I was on the school board, watching test scores and achievement scores and that sort of stuff. It has nothing to do with color. It has to do with poor and not poor. There's plenty of white people that fail. Yep. Yeah. Because they're because they're poor and they don't have the resource the 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 resources or the home life. Okay, so it's not a color thing, but what I'm saying is most of this affects these poor kids. A lot of them are people of color, but there's plenty of white kids that get affected. They just don't make the news yep. because they're after school programs. They can't do those. They're their uh, parks that they play their uh, their sports on their soccer and their football and the, and all that. They can't do those because the illegal immigrants are taking up those spaces and, and the city's letting them do it. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's yeah. bullshit. So, but we, we need to, we need, we can explore that. And we need to explore that in depth, I think, on our next show. We'll do that. Join us for our next episode of this podcast coming up very soon. Look for us every, uh, a new release every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That's the plan. Yeah. We'll have a new podcast out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You'll be able to find us on YouTube. Yeah. You'll be able to find us on Spotify. Uh, and, and the Apple Podcasts, Apple all that. Podcast we're gonna, and, 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 we're gonna need some, and we'd like to get feedback too. Yeah. So, so please let us yeah. know your thoughts um, and and things you'd like us to cover and all of that. Yeah, yeah. You know, am I pretty enough? Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, let me know. No, well. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you next time.